Hey. Hey, you listening. I'm glad you are. Because uh, this is State of the WWE episode number 39. Woo! Yeah, wow. All the way up to episode 39 here with the Dead on Dave. And ah. yeah, we're on the heels of Money in the Bank. The Money in the Bank ladder match is fucking unbelievable. We're going to talk some WWE and the state of the WWE episode number 39. And of course, our I think we'll do our sort of our predictions to, um, oh, okay. you know, Money in the Bank on this show. I don't fuck it. Let's do that. Fuck it. The card's not even defined yet. Fuck it. Well, it, that's what I was worried about, but it's got to be... There's, mo- th- there's three matches. There's three matches All on right. the card. Well, no, I see... Uh, okay. Four, four, uh, four. Uh, yeah, I see the tag team, Dean and Seth, and then the Matt, and then John Cena and Kevin Owens. What are the other ones going to be? There'll be a Divas match for no Divas. reason. Yeah. Then there'll be something uh, else. The IC belt will probably be defended. Yeah, let's see. I mean, I guess it's not... This. That's why this isn't official predictions, but we'll... Uh, We'll just talk about it. We'll give our predictions anyway, as it stands right now. Yeah. If something changes, we'll take our clothes off and change it. Sweet. Thank you guys for subscribing to both uh, the Joe Cronin Show here and the Dead on Dave's YouTube over there. If you haven't done that, go over there and make sure you subscribe to get all the other bonus content. So when you're like, Joe didn't make a fucking video, well, at least you can click over and be like, oh, look, Dave did. Um, Batman did. Hell, I did one on Harley's today. Yeah, and you don't know what he's going to do. There'll be one on toilet seats. I just spent eight hours making a pay-per-view for everybody that wouldn't work on YouTube, so now you can go get it, joecroninshow.com, and uh, click on uh, Utter Chaos, thanks to <laughs> Isaac <laughs> Rojas, who made the uh, the cow squatting on the pay-per-view logo. and uh, Or go to vimeo.com slash Show. And you can uh, order it on pay-per-view on Vimeo. Right now, it's up there as a movie. It's it's great. It's an hour chaos. long, and it's a lot of fun, baby. Chaos. chaos. I'm uttering chaos. You see, you see what I did there? It's, yeah. I, I went away from the cow fucking pun, and now I'm uttering chaos. Chaos. <laughs> That's a way better joke. It is better. It's chaos. funny. Where's Jesse? I don't know. Dead. He, he's not usually here. I just wanted to. I don't know. Where yeah, he's is usually he? not here. Where, where thanks, is thanks he? For a, thanks for making a gal feel important. Well I, well, I figured like he'd be the one to laugh at that. That's why. Oh. The gotcha. fill, he needs to fill in the laughter. Like, I'm laughing in my head, but he needs to be the one to be like, ah. <laughs> Plus, I'm really tired, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's Fuck. why I got up early for you, and then two hours later. There we go. Yeah. we <laughs> you're Right. It took me an hour to figure out how to edit something. Um, all right. So, let's let's go right into, uh, there's a whole bunch. There actually is a. There's not a whole lot of like mainstream news going on, but there's a whole bunch of little sub notes, and in the whole yeah. entire wrestling community as a whole, anyway. Yeah, uh, there's a lot going on. Th- it's weird. Like we got so Samoa Joe. I mean, you get Samoa Joe news, and he broke goddamn Tyson Kidd's neck. Hashtag yeah, right fact. when he signs his full-time WWE contract, too. Yeah, thanks for signing me. I'll take you out. I broke his neck. Uh, yeah, you know what? It, it's it's got to be like Vince just – he's got to walk into a, the office the next day and just be like, I told you. This is why we have the Performance Center. I still have to watch it. Is it a house show or is it on the uh, – yeah, I, I believe it was, it was like main event. I haven't seen the move. I didn't see the move on uh, the Muscle Buster. I, it, or it was before Raw or something. It was the Dark Man. I can't remember what the hell it was. But he fucking hits the muscle buster on Tyson Kidd, and now Tyson Kidd's fucked up. Unbelievable. Just as those guys get going, too. Yeah. It's unreal what happens to Tyson Kidd. It's unreal. But you know what? That's what he gets for fucking taking hashtag fact. And you know something else? <laughs> I-, I can't wait to see what he steals from me next while he's sitting on his hospital bed. Because, he's, he's, because that's what he's going to do. He's going to watch YouTube yep. and then get ideas. Because he's got nothing to do, so he's sitting there. And he's like, what can I do? What's this fucking guy? And then he start, he watches the Joe Cronin show like he does every day. And uh, he gets on his laptop and he goes, well, I'm going to take this now. Yep. Him and That's Tyson exactly Kidd are going to put on their own pay-per-views on 2K15. <laughs> That's right. Tyson Kidd's next slogan. If you don't have talent, have talented friends. <laughs> fucking asshole. Well, the uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, so now, copious. He'll use copious. Oh, he probably will. That's that's his. He could use that. See, and what it is is it's things that people use that they got from you that they, they can say they didn't. That it's just something in everyday life it's that just everybody. Just a fat guy. What's the big deal? No, they'll be like copious. It's a word. I can't use a word. a word. And it's like you know where you got it from, though. You fuck. 
You know where you got it. You know where you got it from. You know what? I'm going to go get myself a whore and copy you. (laughs) 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 What? Why did we fucking shit on Natalia? She's great. I I love the fact that she's just embraced the fact that she's going to dress like a fucking hooker. Yeah, or no, she's you know like what? a My Go Little Pony it. hooker. It's so fucking that's, sexy. That's Whatever what... she's doing, it's so sexy. I don't know. I don't, I think she looks She's great. not a whore. I I love I think Natalia's a really sweet lady. She um, is sweet. I'm not turned on attracted to her at all, but You're not, really? No, no. That's something about her, man. I mean, yeah, if we were in a room together and she was like, "Oh, want to do it?" I'd be like, "Yeah." But, but well, if, you, if you're gonna twist my arm, yeah. But if it was like you know, hey, what's up? Uh, uh, like who, you can go after anyone, you know, or, or look at that girl over there. I would be like, I don't know. We'll look at this. I'm gonna go find the other girl. <laughs> <laughs> Story of Natalia's life. <laughs> yeah, she might pee herself or botch a move. I don't want to fucking. <laughs> she might. She might fart on you. <laughs> she, exactly. That's with all her fucking. I don't want to hear any of that stuff. I want Paige, man. She's gonna drink some fucking beer with me and then sit on my face. <laughs> but she might just scream at you. This is my cock. <laughs> That's I'm. And I'm. What's wrong with that? You're okay with that? What's wrong with that? I, I uh, maybe it's just me. I don't like to be screamed at. I would, know, my cock doesn't belong to I me. Might, but, you know. I would marry Natalia, but I would do Paige. <laughs> but uh, I would except marry, I wouldn't marry Natalia, fuck Paige, kill myself. But I wouldn't I, but I wouldn't marry Natalia cuz I'd cheat on her with somebody. So I, no. Yeah, well, yeah, you considering you already said yes, I'm fucking Paige. That was in choice, but I think also down the road I would it would be a problem. Stop playing with your cats. I, if Tyson Kidd is listening to this to steal some more material, um, he's probably laughing his ass off right now. Um, yeah. Or wants to kill one of, uh, probably me. Um, yeah, probably. WWE uh, noted that officials changed their mind on AJ Styles, and now they're thinking about trying to bring him in. But what's going to happen to the Bullet Club if that happens? Uh, who knows, man? Uh, I mean, like. Don't even know what's going on over there. The, the, the Japanese people are like, what the fuck is this? Doesn't it kind of feel like the Bullet Club has been around for, well, because because it has been around forever, mm-hmm. but it just like it isn't running its course? Can we can we change to something else? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I think. Like, yeah. All I hear yeah. about is Bullet Club. Bullet Club. Who fucking cares? Yeah. AJ Styles, do what you want. Over here, it's a different thing. It's almost like we just like it because the name sounds cool, but we had, nobody has any idea what they're doing. Yeah. Like really, for the most part, like nobody really. Like if it wasn't for Global Force Wrestling, I would have never. Saw any of the clips of any of it, and you I, wouldn't uh, you wouldn't know anything about the Bullet Club, really. I, you know, I mean, yeah, like I would know. I would know. Okay, I know. I heard there was what they're doing over there. I get it, but I wouldn't have seen so many different clips of it. Like, oh, the Bullet yeah. Club's attacks this guy, Satyo Shamaki. Like, fucking the Bullet Club puts Satyo Shamaki through a fucking table and then staples his balls to the canvas. Like, oh. <laughs> that's right. That's exactly what they do. They they, they collate somebody's nutsack to a fucking table. Yeah. And then they spray painted his penis black, and then like told him like then they then they got the Japanese symbol for like dishonor, and they they tattooed that on his ball sack, and then and then sent him home to his dad. <laughs> like I don't know, like, what do they do over there? You know, <laughs> go home and perform seppuku. <laughs> you have been dishonored. This might be the greatest start to a state of the, the WWE. Greatest ever. or the worst, whatever. I like. I I take it as the greatest. What do you call bad? I call uh, great. I like train wrecks. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> I think it's, everything's bad though. Like everything I'm in, I'm like, oh, that was terrible. Like, oh, what are you talking about, Dave? It was gold. No, I, I'm terrible. Wow. The um, you know, I know it's the state of the WWE, but we're trying to get all the other filth out of the way. You so, think AJ's actually coming? I think well now in his pants. No, I, I think that yeah. Uh, AJ. Yeah, I think that he really. I, I would have thought he was going to come eventually. I think if anybody could, it would be him. I don't know why you couldn't put him. I think there's a different thing going on now with the NXT. They they see NXT in such a different way. Um, they could really They're starting to see it as a brand. I yeah, think that's, that's a big part of it. They're they not are. just seeing it as developmental anymore. Th- it's almost like they're seeing it. You're right as developmental, but it's almost like their own TNA. They, they they've said, and it's so funny. That the WWE was like, oh, you guys are trying to compete with Raw in, in the main event. Oh, okay, well, check out NXT. You can't even compete with that. Yeah. And that's our B show is better than your show. Like, what the fuck? But TNA can be PG-14, so it makes no fucking sense. 
Yeah, but it just it goes to show. TJ, T, blah, 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 blah. PG fourteen means nothing because TNA mm-hmm. is not doing anything to get my attention. Well, because it's nothing. Because the, even when you would watch storylines over the past two years, like one of the things, like Slammiversary 2013, I said this during that time. I said, you know, t- Slammiversary 2013, this uh, pay-per-view was so fucking amazing. It was so good. And then what happened was I went back to watching Impact the next week because I was like, here we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm back in at TNA. And then I watched the Impact show, and it was just nothing like the pay-per-view was. Nothing, it was nothing man. like it. It was like just goofiness it reminded me of it it is what it is and and i'm talking about the last two years it's it has you mentioned it earlier it has it's like wcw 99 2000 that's what that's what it feels like it's like you're watching something that's not nothing grabs you really nothing it's you're just like i don't fucking get it you're you're pulled up you don't believe any of it Nothing's exciting. None of the music is good either. That's one of the worst. No, yes. Oh my god. Can you get music right? The only people there's a couple people that had music that were okay, but the best music in TNA ever was the Beautiful People. Oh, it that's was, right. They absolutely that music came on. I knew who was coming out, and I got it. And I f- like like I like AJ's. I like AJ's old one. Yeah, we. Um, you are. You are. I am, I am. I like that fucking music for some reason. Yeah, and that was that was okay. His and then his new one is kind of like that too in a way. Like I know. Oh. <laughs> What's weird about AJ, and this is the only problem with him, is he's mm. 38. I mean, Joe's coming over. Joe's 35. He can have a run. I mean, he really can, and as long yeah, as AJ he stops could. crippling people. But AJ's 38, and that does mean something. I mean, like. 38-year-olds are not getting titles and not main, main eventing shit right now in WWE. Unless you're Batista, of course. But Yeah, AJ's coming in at like right after Shawn Michaels broke his, you know, the first time Shawn Michaels came back. Yeah. Like, we, I think Shawn was around that age. or like 36, 36, 38. I don't know. He was like. I think he was a little bit younger, actually. Really? Yeah. Oh. Let's see. Well, well he's, he's like 40, 50 now, right? Yeah. He, he, I want to say he's like 48, 49, something like that. Okay. So f- that was. Uh, two thousand. So two thousand two is when two. he came back sixteen years ago. Yeah, he was in his early thirties, thirty three, thirty four. Wow. But feel, here's the I thing, though. Sean, Sean could be entertaining with his words. AJ can't fucking talk. Yeah, AJ can't talk. Yeah, he can't talk, man. He just he can't. Thank God he grew his hair though, because without the hair with the haircut <laughs> short, he looks like a goofball. That's yeah, he did. He did. He looks and way the Ric Flair now. look didn't work for him. That was tried enraging. That. that almost yeah. killed him. That was that was so bad. He was like pretending to be Ric Flair. You yeah. know what? That's that's the thing about TNA. Like, and, and Sting was like pretending to be the Joker. It was it was awful. I <laughs> wanted was. to kill myself every single time it came on. It was um, pretty bad. <laughs> but then the wrestling. But then they would have a pay per view, and the pay per view would be so fucking good that I'd be like, "Whoa, this blue!" Like they would beat WWE's pay per views, but Raw would beat TNA Impact. And yeah. if the people who saw Impact didn't like Impact, they're never gonna buy your pay per view. You so gotta sell the pay per view. That's the problem. That was the problem. TNA needed to figure out how to make the show so amazing that you had to buy the pay per view. And if you coupled that with the wrestling they were doing, it would have bl- it would have been fucking blowing up because so many people have gone in to give it a chance and then left or come and gone. Even me and everybody. Yep. So if you had just hook somebody a little bit during those times. It would have been good instead of being like, "Oh, I have to pay a lot of money to get in, to see good wrestling." But, but then, I don't care about anybody. But, but I, I don't, don't care about anybody. I just, I'm, but I would pay to see the good wrestling because I bought Slammiversary. Yeah. And it was fucking amazing in 2013. Last year's Slammiversary wasn't so good, but no. You know what's funny? And what you're saying right now is basically paralleling what if people didn't watch it? If a wrestling promoter or somebody in wrestling needs to know exactly what to fucking do. Go back to last Monday night, watch Paul Heyman on fucking Stone Cold because he told you everything. He told you what you have to do is you, what are you selling? What are you selling? Yes. And yeah. he laid it out. He goes, in my first three minutes of every promo I cut, I tell you who I am, I tell you who I represent, and I tell you what I'm selling. And that's why Paul Heyman is so fucking brilliant. And I didn't realize he was barely 50 years old. That's amazing. Oh, that means he's coming into his prime when it comes for promoting. Yeah. We're, we're going to see some great things out of Paul Heyman in the next 15 fucking years. Yeah. If he you doesn't know, have a heart attack, just, yeah. 
because he gets it and no one else seems to. You know, it's like, who who are you? Why are you here? And what the fuck are you selling? If you could do that and hook your audience, you're gonna be fine. It, yeah, he knows. It's so weird. It's the, he's just right on, and that's the. Pr- it's so funny because he's like Vince, but if um. He's like Vince in the fact that they kind of like he needs someone else. But the difference is Russo and Vince worked, but Paul Heyman and Vince turned into craziness because Paul Heyman like would drive the truck, try to drive the truck over the bridge. Yeah, where well, like Paul Paul was so fucking, and he said it himself. He was just so willful, and he wanted it done the way he wanted it done. Vince Russo's not like that. At yeah. least he wasn't back then. He had a semblance of an idea, didn't know how to develop it, and then Vince would be like, "Oh, okay, here's what we're gonna do with that." Yeah, you know, Paul wanted to tell you the idea. Who's gonna be in the and idea? Shove how it long down the your throat. Go and stick it down your throat. Yeah, and now he's kind of mellowed out, and yeah. it's cool. He needed to mellow out. And I think that's gonna it's gonna be perfect. He's hopefully he's either going to get more power within the WWE, maybe through you know Triple H naturally taking over more and realizing Paul's got such a good eye for the business, or maybe he will decide. You know what? Maybe it's time that I do my own thing again. I think they are a little bit. I don't think they'll ever give him a role like that because I think they they know that eventually Paul, or even if he's not going to be like that now and he's matured, they're, they believe, I think, that Paul eventually will run something crazy. He'll just go yeah. off the deep end. Like, like oh, let's bring him down to NXT and let him run NXT. They would never do that because... No, no, never let him run NXT. Uh, but you know what he could run? Yeah. SmackDown again. Let him write SmackDown exclusively. Separate the shit again as far as who's controlling oh, what. God. I don't He wouldn't think... do that. I don't think he would want to do that. I gotta Probably be, I gotta be not. But if he was interested, I think that would be the perfect thing. Because I, I hate the idea that the same people are writing Raw that are writing SmackDown. Maybe get a couple of the same writers in the room, but I think you have to have a little bit different of a feel. Or you're just going to get the same regurgitated crap every week. Yeah. Or twice a week. Well, in that's this the case. thing, too, is then they're playing it safe because they're really worried about writing for Raw. And then they yeah. just SmackDown's like a building block that they use. Like, okay, now it's almost like you've written your, uh, written a song already. You put the guitar part, you put the drums, you put the keyboard, everything is on the song. But now you're going to go in and put those like little like one liner chords over it. And that's SmackDown because it's the cowbell. Mo- SmackDown's yeah. the cowbell. Yeah, it's massaging <laughs> what's going to happen between Raw and the pay per view or Raw and the next Raw. And instead of somebody else being able to run it but i understand because they're not two different brands now that then you could get into conflicting stories and the writers and making sure everything is uh continuity so that's i kind of get that because you have to have the same writers uh collaborating but yeah it would be nice if they could put some a couple people at the head of smackdown and then all the same writers are there because then the writers can say well but we got batista doing this that's what i'm saying yeah or batista ain't there but we can you know we got sheamus doing this thank god batista's not there oh yeah fucking blue tista love Batista. i think i really do like that guy as a human uh but fucking uh, get the fuck off my tv wrestling wise yeah, if I never see him in a ring again, it would be fucking too soon. By the way, whenever Sheamus is, comes out now, I get pumped up. I like him now. His intro is awesome, isn't it? I, it I really love is. his new fucking entrance. And why didn't they do this all along? Yeah, yeah. All you know, along. he was he was cool when he first came in. He was a yeah. badass. Now he's like a badass who looks like a badass. He doesn't yeah. look like a joke anymore. He looks like the when when uh, in Short Circuit Two when Johnny Five turns into the <laughs> punk Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god when he took over the fucking uh the, the discount fucking electronic store and he started putting up oh my god i need a hero <laughs> yes <laughs> not your silk shirt silk shirt <laughs> Oh my god, yes, that's exactly what he looks like. Oh, I gotta find a photo of that. Like, where the fuck is that at? You that's know? too good. Oh my, that, you just created the the greatest Seamus meme of all time. <laughs> Get him with the mohawk, because he had the mohawk. He, he did, he had the mohawk, he absolutely yeah. did. I am coming for you, Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> to anybody who's under 24 has no idea what the fuck no we're talking about. No idea what we're about. talking about. Uh, Mas locos kick your ass. <laughs> Mas locos kick, kick your, your face. face. Mas locos kick your balls into outer space. <laughs> now, I was, uh, I was, I lost my mind when I was a kid when I heard them singing that. I thought that was uh, the funniest fucking thing it ever. It was too good. It was too fucking good. And then the, the stereotype Indian fucking. Oh, Johnny, 
<laughs> good to know. Oh, Johnny, what? I'm going to wash out your mouth, Johnny. Five. Oh, the, man. The prototypical white con man. It was, oh, my God, that movie's great. Yes. I fucking love it. Man, I miss the fucking 80s. Yeah, I was saying that to Leah. I always say that Jesus to Leah. But Christ. Oh, I found the fucking... I sort of found like a close up of him, but unfortunately, there's not like a uh, like a better one of like the full shot of him with the with I'd have to I have to put the movie in to get that shot. But holy shit, hold on, let me put it up he here. He kept calling Fred Durf. Oh yes. Oh god. Oh god, that's Durf. so funny. Oh, because he's freaking out now. He's like something's wrong with him. Like I, yeah, his his wiring is all wrong. My name is Fred. That's what I said. Durf. That's what I said. Durf. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> oh, oh my god Cause that's Fred backwards isn't it Fred backwards that's yes right. it's Fred backwards Durf <laughs> <laughs> That's what they said Durf <laughs> I need more input <laughs> Oh my god uh, It's Holy a little shit. me Isn't that special <laughs> Making those little fucking toys Oh god I love Short Circuit too Not as much as the first one Cause well, on, you know man. what? A lot of those movies. What's up with the um in the eighties and the night and even sometimes movies they like they make the first movie is like like dr- more dramatic and serious and they made yeah. the movie to do that movie, but then they make a second one and the second one is like a total new tone. Uh-huh. Cash. But, it's called a cash in. <laughs> but I, but I know, but a- it's like it's we it's like but it but it's but here's the thing about it. It's the ones that sometimes they work though. Yeah. Because you're yeah. like I do, I'm. I we both we love. Apparently we love that movie, but yeah. then in the first one there was this whole the military and the fucking robots. Yeah, the guy from fucking Police Academy yelling at people and shit. Yeah, and then then the second one it's like a big fucking joke, kind of. Oh yeah, two people from Police Academy. You had fucking you had the oh Tackleberry. Was, oh no, no not, you had, had Lasar and Steve Gutenberg. You had the guy who Mahoney. Ran the, yeah, Mahoney. Was yeah, Mahoney in and you know the guy who kept screaming Proctor. Proctor, yeah, the bad yeah. guy. And everything he's in, almost. Um, yeah, yeah so basically, he's got so one character. That movie was like that. I think Ninja Turtles was like that. The first Ninja Turtles movie was like dark. And it then, was a little darker, yeah. And then the second movie was like, yeah, go Ninja. We don't use weapons anymore either. <laughs> we don't use weapons and go Ninja, go Ninja, and, go. Yeah, it was. It became a joke. The first one was a real serious dark movie, and then the second one was like, woo. And uh, Gremlins was like that too. Gremlins was like a horror yes. movie, and don't feed him after midnight. And then the second one was like, don't feed him after midnight. There's people in lipstick and shit in the building. Fucking the, uh, Gizmo's Rambo now. What the yeah, fuck? All kinds yeah. of just fucking. It's like a parody of itself, is what it is. Ghostbusters too. Ghostbusters yeah, you're right. too. Ghostbusters two had the same vibe. The first one seemed like it was a real serious actual movie. The second movie. one, we have a dancing toaster. Yeah, pink bathtubs are coming after people. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Vigo, I will say Vigo was a little scary. Although he Vigo didn't. was a little scary, but yeah, I don't know. You're right. Vigo's but like. But then you had his little conduit who was just fucking strange. I'm yeah. coming for Vigo. Yeah, Vigo what the fuck? is here. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. And, and yeah, Gozer. By the time you get to the end of the first Ghostbusters, it was kind of scary. Like Gozer and that shit was kind of freaky, even though it was funny. It but, turned out to be a marshmallow man, but hey, you know, whatever. Yeah, I guess they did have the marshmallow. Yeah, you know, there was just something more serious about all those first movies, and then the second one was like, let's let's just fucking fuck Well, with. yeah, because a marshmallow man on his own isn't fucking scary, but a fucking 60-foot marshmallow man, that's fucking terrifying. Yeah. I give a fuck. That's so weird. It's just, yeah, it's something that was that's a how constant. The 80s were, man. 90s and 80s, those those movies did that. It's especially in the 90s. The sequels, a lot of these sequels happened in the 90s. I think Short Circuit might have happened that's in right. the 90s. That's right. They did. So it was You're almost right like in the 80s, it was the real movie, and then the <laughs> 90s, it went whoo, like oh. I, I mean, I don't know if they were like, we can expand the audience if we lowered the rating from an R or a PG-13 to a PG or something. Oh God, can you imagine what Goonies two would have been like if they would have done it in the, yeah. in the 90s? Yes, holy God! You know what would have happened in the Goonies too? too? The the Goonies was gonna would have started and like the fucking lady, the angry and Danny DeVito or whoever the fuck she was, yeah, the, the throw mama from, from the train, train yeah. chick, yeah, all that stuff. All those people would have come after, would have been ready to go after them, but then their like plane would cr- like crash into a, a mountain or something, and then they're like they're dead, and that was it. <laughs> and then they cut to the Goonies who are all like stuck in a cave somewhere, and then they get out because they found some ground, they, and then they climbed through a sewer, and the sewer led to uh, the baseball field of the Sandlot, and then they played baseball with the Sandlot people, and then <laughs> then the movie was over. The movie was over. You're like, what the fuck was that about? Like, they, they met the Sandlot kids, and then they built a fort. 
Because why not? Because why the camp out? <laughs> <laughs> the great Bambino. Oh, uh, God. The Sandlot. People forget that there was actually some dark humor in Goonies. Remember they opened the fucking movie with the criminal acting like he hung himself to break out of jail? Uh oh yeah yeah that's right yeah, that's he what I mean though it's like they had that dark stuff but yeah they, but like you you can change it you can make it like all fucking goofy <laughs> right it's just oh yeah, because the movie will just focus on Chunk and fucking uh, the Mongoloid right it's called Goonies two Mongoloid and Chunk <laughs> <laughs> oh penis all right well anyway back to wrestling Jesus yeah Christ. fuck um what the hell just happened and TNA we could have called this state of TNA um. You're getting your money's worth, though. Well, actually, this is free, but uh, Kevin Owens uh, was pulled from those events, but then he's going to be on more events, and you got some tweets from CM Punk. It's Kevin Owens the future, man. I mean, this guy is ridiculously good. I was, did you, I watched the War DVD, the the one with him, he poor, uh, man, I thought um, the guy, oh, God, what's his name, um, the Briscoe, one of the Briscoe, Mark Briscoe. I thought Mark Briscoe was going to kill himself in that match. Yeah. Um, the Kevin Kelly's commentary is, is so funny. It's like, so over the top at times. It's so ridiculous. It's like over the top sometimes, underwhelming other times, <laughs> and he sounds like a girl other times, like on the DVD. Yeah, and no wonder why he was called a Hermie. Yeah, he's really weird. Like you know what? I want. I actually asked him to be on the show, and I, t- I take it back, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Never mind, Kevin Kelly. Go you away. stay where you are, Hermie. Yeah, I wish Stone Cold would have shot you with a stray bullet. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> what the fuck? no, he's really weird though. It's, uh, like I feel like I could have done. I wish I started thinking like I wish I was calling this because yeah. if I, I was calling that d- whole DVD, I, I think I would have put a lot of shit into it. And like I felt like he was just like, oh. T- to be fair, we think we can do a lot of things better than what they're doing. Yes. <laughs> I think I, yes, I do. I, I do believe that because I'm because yeah. if I sit there and I think and I'm like this announcer is kind of like, well, it, it's easy to think that when we don't have any of the restraints or any of the fucking responsibilities. I don't but believe. I can't believe anyone at ROH is like Kevin. Probably try, not. Ring of Honor. You're probably right. Yeah, Kevin, you need to make sure you're not too crazy. <laughs> and Kevin, make sure you talk a lot. Make sure you there's no silent spots. Make sure you don't scream like a girl. You know, I don't. It sounds like they're not doing that over there. Where's your oversight committee? Uh, I got a very interesting phone call last night. Okay. From Tommy C. Well, you and mean like when he didn't show up to monetize this? Yeah, he didn't show up to monetize this. But I, I thought, like, was if he this after call the me, show or before? It was well after. This was last night for me. Okay. Uh, and well, if I don't get at least three calls from Tommy C, I think he's fucking dead. If he doesn't call me at least three times throughout the day, he's probably dead. So, I talked to him all the time. He calls last night, and he's like, Dave, I got to tell you something. I'm like, oh, God, he, this is where he's going to tell me that he, he wants my anus. But no, instead, he tells me, he goes, Kevin Owens is bringing me back to wrestling. Like, I haven't been this engrossed in wrestling in 15 years. <laughs> he goes, Kevin Owens is fucking amazing. I go, isn't he? I go, and you know what? John Cena, too. Him and John Cena together, they're just, they're, they're, it's not just Owens. I mean, he's right. Because yeah, they it's had a not. great match. They had a great match. And, like, all the promos back and forth, everything that Kevin Owens is saying and doing, man, it's just the promo he had on SmackDown was great. It's just bringing his son into it. Everything that Kevin Owens is doing, if they just don't fuck this up, Kevin Owens is Brock Lesnar. Kevin yeah. Owens can be fucking the, the reactions he's getting, he can bring – he can – he could be that guy that unites all of the differing fucking wrestling opinions. Like, we're all so fucking flighty. Everybody wants something else from wrestling. Kevin Owens could bring all those motherfuckers together because he has a little bit of everything in him. It's He's that good. Well, he, I mean, the, well, I don't think he will because what you just said, I think it contradicts the whole deal, which is not, not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's just that uh, a lot of the crowd, 80, most of the time the crowd hates him. Um. So yes you, and no. I mean, you hear it. You hear it. You, you hear uh, a lot of the. Even though he's getting the booze when he's like running down Cena, you still will hear fight Owens fight. But in that's the same what, what five I'm, minute span. What I'm saying is that he's still, he's do he's amazing and he is what we want. And he is he is great. My yeah. thing is I don't think what he's what you just said because I think he's just he's another guy who's pulling everyone in different directions because there's still a bunch of people that love him, still a bunch of people that boom, a bunch of people that boom because they don't know who he is. 
See, like, I think um, he's he's being a heel, but he's being more of a tweener because he's being a heel with reasons. And usually when you're a heel with reasons, and his are actually quite pure. Well, I think we're talking about two different things here. I think that he might be. what he's doing is great. There is yeah, uh, yeah. You can't do any better. Like you said, he's interesting as a bad dude. Uh, so, yes, all the people that hate him, he's making them hate him for the right reason. All the people that love him are loving him for that reason. So he's doing, he's touching every base. But he's not bringing, uh, he's, all right, he's not bringing everybody together in the same opinion, but he's bringing everyone together with being interested. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, I get it. That's, that's what I was meaning. He's bringing everybody to the same opinion that he's awesome. That's yeah. what I'm, well, no, I, I disagree with that because I think there's a lot of people, New Give it wrestling time. fans who don't think he's awesome, but they don't understand that he is. So there, he's gonna. The more matches that he wrestles, the more time that he has on the mic, he's gonna win more and more people but, over. But that, it's okay I'm, if I'm not he saying doesn't. right the second. It's okay if someone hates him and says, "Who is yeah. he? He seems boring, and I don't know who he is, and I'm mad at him." Because sure. they they don't know that there's they haven't been this mad yet. So that's yeah. actually they don't know how it's good. Like you remember, so, you remember when Stone Cold at the height of his popularity, they started tweaking and fuck with his character a little bit. And people were like, what the fuck is going on? Like when he had his uh, his turn, when he went to, with McMahon for like, it was a really, really short fucking turn. Yeah. And everyone was like, what the fuck is going on? And then they quickly realized their fucking mistake. It's like if they don't make that mistake with Kevin Owens, if they just let Kevin Owens continue down this path, I think he will win more and more people over. Because he's so fucking talented, man. They're just like, and he, he's not just talented; he's charismatic. He everything that he does is is exactly what we loved about some of the biggest superstars in the late '90s. I think he brings that with a modern twist now. Yeah, yeah, I I, I agree with that, and I, I you're right, and I love it. I've been dying. For, I I mean, think about that last pay per view. I mean, the only match I was interested in was Owens and Cena. I mean, yeah. that was the one that that wasn't the only one. It was just the one that I was. Like it's really, the match you remember. I, well, not even that. Before it started, I, that was the match I was waiting for it yeah. to start. Yeah. I wanted to see that. I mean, Dean and Seth too, but I really was like, I want to see Seth, what's going to happen in this match. And then it was fucking awesome. It and I got to go back and watch it. It wasn't awesome because Seth Rollins was doing like flips over things and Dean Ambrose was close and people were going off ladders. It was awesome because Kevin Owens... And Cena were just executing these maneuvers. It was a yeah. weird match. It was like a, they just kept having these maneuvers and these spots, and they just kept going, and it was good. When was the last time you saw John Cena get reversed off the top rope into basically a fucking cradle power bomb? Yeah. I mean, fuck, man. It seemed like John Cena was taking risks with Kevin Owens that he normally doesn't take with other wrestlers. Yeah, and that was interesting to me too. I think there's a concentrated effort by Cena himself too, to which we know this, uh, to to say, um, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna do my damnedest to put these guys over. Yeah. Like, let's start building for the future. He yeah. is all game for that. Like, getting all these people up here, and uh, and I I think that there is definitely something to these brass ring comments now, sure. um, because when some of these NXT people come up. And it's different. They're running into... It's amazing. We're seeing two different type of wrestlers now because of the NXT people that have been coming up. We are seeing these fucking people who are just here to be happy to be there yep. and have been used to this celebrity sort of style. Kind of like the Natalia's. Yeah. That's, that's always been your knock with her. Is that she's just she's just holding her spot. But, but in, in Italian might be even another category. Like That's like the my wrestling family tradition and... Uh, you know, I'm a wrestling family tradition. So she's in the middle to me. Like someone like Cameron is just gar like you're you're sh you are garbage. You shit, can't wrestle. Absolute shit, yeah. Waste of a spot. You're waste of fucking spot, Cameron. You st it started when Stone Cold kicked you off tough enough right away because he saw it. But somehow you got brought in to fucking do something. Are you kidding me? Fuck. She sucks. She's um, off of uh, divas now too. Good. I mean, she's a, a pretty girl. She seems... Some... Eh, she's she's kind of. She's okay. I don't think she's pretty. <laughs> well, all right. Well, I, I mean, I, 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 I just I Not for me. She just, I like, do. She's got that face on her that... Like, but she's got a bitch good face. comes out of her mouth. She looks like the person that she, I've run into plenty of times that just... I, maybe she's not, and she just she doesn't know it, but she just comes off mean. And yeah. for, forget what she really is, because personally, she might be awesome. I don't know her personally. She might be really sweet. I don't know. But um, 
to me, all I care about is the fact that why she can't wrestle. She shouldn't be there. She shouldn't be yeah. wrestling. Rosa Mendez and you need to go away. And remember the time she tried to fucking pin somebody on their stomach? I don't. That was great. I, I don't remember it exactly, but I'm sure yeah, it sounds she, right. She fucking she does her little split maneuver on someone's back. Like they're laying on their stomach and she's screaming at the referee to count the pin while she's And he's got like, the No. He's no. like, No, we can't do that. <laughs> she's like, Count it. <laughs> like, uh, oh my god. He and then uh, you know what? She's the type of person that I bet went in the back and was like, he embarrassed me. He didn't even want Yeah. Like da 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 da. And it's like, no, you're a fucking idiot. Yes. You're, and you you're shouldn't be here. Wrong. Yeah. And so so there's a lot of those people that are there. Um, it's, they're just safe with their spot and happy to be there. And this is all whatever. Summer Ray, Summer Ray is probably in that category. Um, yeah, I, I felt like when she first came up, she had a spark, but I think the thing that hurts her is they don't, I don't even think they let her get it, do anything or get a chance to do anything. Because like the only thing she doesn't fuck up is when she does that damn really sweet spinning heel kick the that she spinning does. Spinning thing, yeah. Or or when she, she, she does the flip kick, or leg drop, the flip leg drop, she does that too, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty nice. But she, other than that, I mean, she's got the most annoying voice on the fucking roster. I thought she could be a is, good heel, but they don't. I don't know. Now she's with the Miz, and it's just weird. That see, those two are perfect because they're in that. They're in the same category, I think. Do um, you think it hurts the fact that we know that he's at, and he's made reference to the fact that he's actually married to Maurice? Like, it's like it kind of distorts reality a little bit because you know that they might be close, they might be working together, but they're not fucking. And because they're not fucking, I don't know if I could buy the whole thing. Maybe that's just me. Yeah, no. This is goes back to another thing that I don't like is I think it's too fucking out there. Yeah. I I want people to hold on to their characters more. I don't like this. If I was fucking in the WWE, I would get angry at, at things getting out. I, um, Nothing you can do about it, though, man. The internet's everywhere, you know? No, but I mean, not getting out, but it's not that. Getting out happens. Okay. And even mentioning something here or there, but doing so many interviews and like where you're out of character and you're talking yeah. about your character. Yeah, no, that's, and, yeah, that's true. Here's my wife. It's like, no, stop that. Save that. You're breaking the fourth wall. It's all there is no wall is the problem. Yeah, there's no wall. And um and, and here's the other thing. You want to know something else that's different about the business is us. Um you know internet fans even that has changed. It's not internet fans. What it is is there, there's a, there's a huge group of people. There, there's a bunch of WWE fans who just watch the show. They're uh -huh. they're younger. They're new fans. People that have been watching for five years or less. Um they they watch and they they they're happy about it. And they turn, they go, then they go play 2K15 right after it. They're like, yeah, that was cool. I'm gonna play 2K15. Um, or they're gonna, or they do a review video and they talk about like, it was great when Sheamus did this, and then that happened. But then there's all of us who are like jaded, and we, um, they're or they're critiquing the story, um, and what they saw and what should happen. Where like, I think Sheamus, it was bad that Sheamus attacked him because, like, he used to get along with him, and I thought maybe they could tag. It's almost like they're talking about it. Like, like it's, it's real. like it's real. Yeah. Some of them are talking about it like it's completely real. Others are talking about it like kind of like it's real. Some and, people talk it like it's a television show because but, I mean that, that's yes. at the end of the day it's it's Game of Thrones. It's a yes. television show. They're yeah. talking about it like it's Game of Thrones. Yeah. We are talking about it. However, most of the internet and most of the talk is what we're talking about, which is we're talking about who's getting pushed and behind yeah. the scenes and what's going on. So there's a different layer of of if there's like not only is there there's three different layers of fans watching the show, there's three different layers of WWE superstars. Yeah. There's three different layers of people reviewing the show. And it's you know, amazing. I, think I figured out why too. Why? Because we're all doing it wrong. We're we're all thinking of it the wrong way because we all have this entity of what wrestling is when it really is only one thing. It, you know what it is most like? What it's most akin to? Huh. The circus. Yes. It's the circus. It's. It, the circus makes mm -hmm. no qualms about most of what you see is going to be fake. No qualms about it. That clown didn't really fucking cut another clown in half. It, it's fake. It's a, it's a show. But it travels. It fucking it's, – it, it's about pomp and circumstance and very grandiose. It, it, it's, it's awesome, you know. It, but it doesn't take itself too seriously. When they're not in the center ring, the clowns take off their fucking makeup and can just be a person. Well, that's the other thing about wrestling, too, is the further back you go, the more wrestling was like a circus. Yes. But well, it started in the circus. Right. 
and that and that's but the problem is like you said it started there and it's become out more but now it's not even like there was all that secrecy and then like in the yeah. 50s and like yes even, carnies used to be the circus used to be very secretive you're right and you're you, right but, but you and you, people didn't know if there was people that didn't know it was fake so that's the yep. thing but now it's also out there that it's just it's it's in the last 15 years or in the last maybe 20 years wrestling has become and tr been changing into something it's never been before yeah. because we're it's all out there that it's fake it's not like in the 80s some people said it was fake and then someone said it's not and then some people didn't believe it. and it's, you could make people think it was real yeah. um you could well, because you have your melters and you have your actors and they're completely different you know it's like you have the people who are trying to get you to like wrestling for one reason then you have the other guys trying to do it for the other reasons and it's completely different. Like Meltzer wants to fucking expose every secret, every rumor, report every fucking thing that's going on, even if he's wrong yeah. a lot of the time. After just wants to talk to the wrestlers. He wants to just get the story. He doesn't report on rumors. He doesn't fucking no conjecture. He just fucking talks wrestling. When he's interviews, he does fucking uh, uh, little um, in impressions with the wrestlers that he's talking. To. I, yeah. I watched the one he did with Jay Lethal recently. Yeah, I saw that one too. That's the one where which Jay was awesome. Nails the Ric Flair. Yeah. Oh God. And Macho he, Man. Yeah, that was really really cool. Yeah, his <laughs> Ric Flair. I'm gonna show you the secret of how to do a Ric Flair. <laughs> he didn't want to do it, and then he did it, and it was great. He did it in the interview. It's just it, I think that's what it comes down to. It's either you're a Meltzer or you're an Aptor, or you're in between. To be honest. Yeah, or you're a hybrid of both, which might be just as dangerous. I think that uh, yeah, I like I've I couldn't I I enjoy, Bill Aptor's interviews are great. But when I watch Bill Apter's reviews of the wrestling show, I can't watch it. Yeah. Because he yeah. talks about it like it's real. Yes, he does. So I and, do and and that's not you. Yeah. But at the same time, you're not full on blow up the industry with everything behind the scenes either because in fact, most of that drives you insane. So yeah, yeah, you're right in the middle. That's what I feel like I'm like I am a little bit like I will t I will talk about the storylines like they're real and then i'll talk about them like why i don't think it made sense because it's not real or whatever yeah. i don't know whatever we're yeah we're in the middle but there's a third category there's three categories there's like you said there's one way there's that way and then there's the other way that's a hybrid and that's what we are yeah. um and but there's just three different divisions none of them are right or wrong or whatever it's just there's so much room to do it game of thrones there's no one making there's okay there is that in Game of Thrones. TMZ, TMZ says Game of Thrones star so and so might be sleeping with this dude. Yes. Like that. So there you go. They they're doing that there. But um, and then it may, I shit maybe maybe this is how it goes in everything actually because then then in Game of Thrones you could have a a, a a show that says why did they why did they kill this guy they should have killed that guy because because they get into it like the show is real they get into yeah. that universe you have people. Who go to places to sit on an Iron Throne because they're so into the fucking show. Yeah. It's not people think that it's just how people react to wrestling. It's only confined to wrestling. Yeah, and it's, it's not, not just confined to wrestling. Everybody look how many assholes walk around Star Trek conventions wearing a red red shirt hoping a rock falls on them. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. you get immersed into the fucking universes that you love. But then and it, that's okay. But even in Game of Thrones, then you could have that third category where they 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 could just say Oh, I loved how the sword and this happened and that happened. So it's like, you know, that that could be all seriousness and you're talking yeah. about the show like it's real. So it's the yeah. same thing. But in sports, it's just endless talk of what if and what could and what they could do. Yeah. Um, so it's actually only one, usually one way to talk about sports. It's because there's an off season and there, it's it's either you're talking about what's happening or it's going to happen. Yeah, you know, and and that's it. It's like okay, we're winning this year. Oh, we didn't win. Oh, we're winning next year, and here's why, you know. But even in sports, you you, you know, it's kind of funny because you can because you you either talk you talk about how important the sport is to you, how important your team is to you. But God, I hate the fucking management. God, yeah. this fucking owner, if he would just you know like, and it's it's all real. That's the only difference is sports is all real. There's no fake to it. But you know, well, you know what I mean. I want to uh, let's let's graze over some of these matches real quick. Yeah, we'll, sorry about that. Well, we'll, well, no, I'm I'm the one who talked the most, <laughs> so I uh, <laughs> I barely let you. By the time you started talking, oh, let's graze over these other matches now. Um, no, I want to graze over these real quick, and then we've got some bonus talk we're gonna do. I think. Um, okay, first of all, uh, all right, let's start with the tag team match. Uh, the new day. I, I we got we got a lot of. Uh, 
A lot of black going on, finally. It's almost like the... <laughs> I think got the, black on black wrestling, Yeah, finally. WWE was like, all right, let's 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 give them a category. Tag team. Because <laughs> we're sick. Um, we're going we're gonna to give them a place to shine. It's called the tag team division. Here's how I feel. I'm going to tell you how I feel about everybody in this match. Hold on a second. Where the fuck is it? This is going to be dangerous, but I'm going to tell you how I feel this about it. This can be very dangerous. So, um, okay, Titus O'Neil is dangerous. Speaking of dangerous, I, you know what? I wanted to disagree with you on that. <clears throat> okay, I don't think he's not dangerous. He's a, he's intense. He's aggressive. I like his intensity. But when you watch him drop people, you watch how they fall. He's not dropping anyone on their fucking heads, man. He, every time he throws somebody in that reckless, haphazard way, they're landing flush on their back. He seems to have it. He can be a little out of control with his kicks. His kicks is the one thing. When he kicks someone, he looks like he kicks them really, really stiff. But other than that, I feel, man, uh, I, I think he's on the brink of being something. I like him a lot. Oh, God. I Okay. I I mean, I know somebody else backed him up. I forget who it was, Booker T, maybe. But uh, I don't – shit, I didn't – I just – JBL loves him, too. Yeah, I don't know. I, he, I, I don't want to be in the ring with – he's the only guy. If you told me on the whole entire roster who do you not want to be in the ring with, don't put me in the ring with him. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. I don't. Yeah, that's weird. Then I get. Then you get his tag team partner, who is just uh, can't take just him. There. I can't take him serious. Yeah, he's and, just there. He fl- he floats around the ring, and I don't say that because he's gay. He just he just does. He floats around the ring. And he flaps his arms and weird. He's he's just kind of there. It's really weird. It used to be the other way at one time. I feel like, but. I don't know. Yeah, so I I hope to God they don't win the titles. So I don't think they will. I think New Day keeps these things so we can keep them rolling on their. Uh, they they they're keeping them. To, yeah, yeah. They're onto something, and they you don't want to get rid of it now. You don't want to do that. So New Day retains the titles. Um, let's go to the Money in the Bank ladder match because I said. Uh, months ago, you know, months ago that either you're Dean, sticking with Kane or Reigns. Yeah, because Dean <laughs> Dean or Reigns was gonna win, and Dean's on some other thing now. So yeah, I believe. Although, unfortunately, it seems like the obvious choice, which makes me wonder if they won't make him win because they don't like to do that. Yeah. Uh, but, and it could be like Sheamus, but I'm still going to pick Reigns. I, I think there's two guys, a dark horse and a long shot. Mm-hmm. I think it's Reigns and Sheamus. It's going to be one of those two almost 100%. I think Neville has an outside dark horse chance of winning this thing. Very remote, but he's mm. dark horse. And then there's the guy who... If he won it, it would make more sense than you think. And it's Kofi Kingston. I think Kofi Kingston could win this match with the help of the New Day, and it wouldn't be all that shocking when you think about it and what they're doing. New Day has been working with the Authority. They've been in fucking storylines with Kane. You know, he's been doing a lot of on-screen stuff. So if Kofi were to come out of this thing as the winner, it wouldn't be all that shocking. I don't think it would work, but it wouldn't be all that shocking. I don't don't think they'll do that, only because Kofi's just... Out of all three of them, I mean, he's the one that I just don't believe. It's almost like he's like the guy who, like, these three guys going to rob a store, and one of them didn't really want to do it, but he followed the other guys. <laughs> and then they shoot the clerk, and he does go to jail, but he really didn't – he wasn't really that bad. He just couldn't say no. He couldn't get out of the bad situation. He's been he's been getting into it more. It's, I think you're right, though. At first, he was just, like, If he can there. step it up a little more with it, I mean, you know. He has been, like, on SmackDown, I felt he really started to come out a little bit in the promo. Um, you know how you really do it? Uh, you know huh? how you do it, Dave? Um, and this might be what you're talking about, but, you know, you do is you have Dean about to win a, the match with Seth, and Kofi comes out and fucking hits him in the head with something. I mean, I'm dead serious. Yeah. If you make just figure out whatever the people would hate, whatever people like the most and have Kofi Kingston ruin it. Yeah. And the new day, but have Kofi be the one that executes it. Yeah, Kofi's got to be the one to do like the trouble in paradise off the fucking ladder or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I or, agree. Or terrible like even. And maybe then that will he'll get maybe having those boos and the heat will turn up his uh, acting ability. Maybe, maybe, but it's it's not it's not really his fault, but it is kind of that Xavier Woods is completely stealing every yes. goddamn scene there because he is. Well, Xavier he's the Woods be- is ridiculous. He's the best. I mean, like to be honest, if if Kofi wasn't there, it would be Xavier Woods and his bodyguard Big E, and that's what you would do. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, that's what you would do. And Big E would say, "What do you want me to do, boss?" And he'd be like, "Hurt him." <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> At first, I really thought it was about making Big E the next big star. Now I'm not so sure because it seems like they are all kind of starting to gel and rise up together, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, 
the possibilities for the new day are kind of endless right now. Yeah, I mean, you've... they can add people to that. They don't have to, but they easily could. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's a weird thing, but it's it finally worked. I mean, after all that shit, you know, we God, we were we were killing. We wanted to kill especially. ourselves. Yeah, we wanted to kill ourselves to them. Uh, but it, it was when they were faces. It's amazing how <laughs> flipping them works. Um, anyway, so we, we, all right, we got our opinions on that. I don't that. think Ziggler has, and we didn't even talk about Ziggler, but I yeah. think he has virtually no chance of winning. But yeah. This is the one year where it's like Ziggler, nah, he's just I can, there. I, yeah, I mean, I could even see Kane goddamn winning the thing, even though that would be. You know, I thought about that. I really think it is a possibility. It, no, it, it sickens I, me. I think Kane, literally Kane is there to make you think, oh God, they're going to fuck him <laughs> over. But, <laughs> act, <laughs> but actually Roman's going to win. So Kane it's, is there to make you think. Something well, nefarious is going to happen. If they would have kept going with this whole Seth Rollins and Kane feud like they were having, Kane winning the fucking Money in the Bank would make a lot more sense. Because like he would win it, and then now what? Now it's like yeah, now like, the authority. Now you know what he could win because the authority would hold the title and possession of the money. They have all the power. That would be then so. Then you bring in Brock Lesnar to, to shatter it all down again. I don't know. There's there's definitely ways to, to handle it. Yeah, I hope that doesn't happen. But I get me I, too. I know what you're saying. Uh, oh my too. god! Uh, I don't know. Roman probably. Uh, Sheamus, I'm hoping, but Roman probably. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm still gonna stick with Roman, even though they put him on the front, which makes it really uh, mm-hmm. weird. But uh, Dean versus Seth Rollins. Uh, yeah, I think that. Um, It'll be awesome. It's gonna be an awesome match, and I th- obviously think that they are still gonna keep the belt on Seth Rollins. Yeah. But yeah, but I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure how. Yeah, I'm it's going to be something screwy. I feel like, but it, it almost has to because Dean is way too over right. The, the work he's doing right now is incredible. That promo he, he and Seth Seth cut on each other on SmackDown was awesome. Yeah, it was really really good. And God, I care about this match, and I want to see Dean stay in the main event title. I want to see him win the belt. I want to see him take the belt off of Seth. But because we know Brock is coming back, it's like. How does that work? How yeah. do we handle this? Well, we're going to... I don't know. You're right. I don't know. I mean, I, I, we're going to handle it. I don't know. I'm so stuck. I don't know what the WWE's got planned. Yeah. And there's so many different things you could do. Like, I mean, Dean could fucking not win. And then you, are you saving Dean to... It, it's almost... It's back to what we've been doing the last few years. D- Dean hasn't exploded yet. It hasn't exploded yet. But you know it's got to happen, it's, right? It's, <laughs> it's going there. And... But you almost want to hold it back and wait to WrestleMania. Do we do we wait to the Rumble? I, we, you know. It's... Yeah. Do we wait to WrestleMania? Do we wait to the Rumble? Is you know do, is Roman out of the picture for this whole thing? Is Roman gonna come back again yeah. next year? Are we gonna have? It's almost like eventually, this whole yeah. thing. Roman's gonna start saying, you know, that's it, man. I, I'm in it for me now. You're in it for you. He's in it for him. I'm in it for me. And then we're gonna we may get you may get. The Shield triple threat this this WrestleMania. I think it's very possible. I also think it's a possibility for SummerSlam. Yeah, I think that I think it's a possibility for SummerSlam. It, it makes more sense for SummerSlam because the, holding this back to WrestleMania is going to be tough. It's that, going to be really blue tough. Blue balls. And it's not only tough because of those three. It's tough because of the outside guys that are hovering around. Brock like, Lesnar. You still don't know what you, Brock Lesnar, Bray Wyatt. He's a floater. When are they going to put Bray Wyatt into this situation? And I I'm think not as worried guy, about him. I think he can go into an IC title pitcher before he, he, he can, gets into but this. That, it, wouldn't that feel like a step backwards oh, at this point for Bray no, Wyatt? No, like, you know what? I don't think so. I think him holding a title is – an IC title would be great because he doesn't have to hold any belts to do anything, but he's also no, had he some major be. losses, so he needs yeah. he does need something actually. It would be how nice, about, but I'd like to see him in the main How about Bray pitcher? Wyatt beats John Cena for the United States Championship? You go back to that for that, that that's possible, but I think the guy that he's facing, John Cena is facing, is the other guy who really throws things a lot of things in the flux. If Kevin Owens is going to be on the main roster and he does in fact beat John Cena again, where the fuck he's not going to a mid card? No, Kevin Owens has got to be in the fucking main event picture. How about Kevin whether Owens? he's going to be the new lackey for the Authority, which they have uh, been teasing with yeah. him and so. 
There's a bunch. And we know Triple H. Does that lead us to Kevin Owens and Brock Lesnar? Well, plus Triple H loves them. So, yeah, that would be great. They got, uh, there you go. Brock Lesnar, you know, attack comes after Seth, but they sick Owens on him. They sick Owens on him. But you know what? Oh, my God. I think I just came. What about Lesnar and Stone Cold, though, with this whole fucking Stone Cold promo during the goddamn uh, podcast? What the fuck, dude? Stone Cold turned it on like I would randomly in a show. He just went into a promo. He it, did you not get chills when he really started getting going? He, yeah, when he almost kicked Heyman off the show. I, I, he was like, I, I was like, does Heyman know he was out of here because I'm getting tired of looking at your face? It was. All, like, I, oh, I couldn't shit. tell if Heyman knew he was going to do that or if this was just spontaneous Stone Cold or if this was all a setup. So that the, was about as Stone Cold as we've seen Stone Cold in ten years. It exactly. Was awesome. It was he was awesome. riding around waving a flag on an ATV. He got fucking real. Yeah. And the best thing was, again, it's like this is what happens when you're good. I couldn't tell if they talked about that before, or if Stone Cold just was out of nowhere shooting like out of nowhere. Just you to- know what? I th- I think they talked about it, and here's my here's my evidence as to why. When all that stuff was going on two months ago with the legal stuff, when he got his T-shirts pulled and his podcast pulled and all that, yeah. he released a statement. He said, look, WWE and I are still working together. We got things for the future. Believe me, th- uh, something's going to be announced, and believe me, it's going to be awesome. It's not. He wasn't talking about the podcast. I think he was talking about this. No. I think this is what he was talking about. I think I, I I look, I don't think it's a five percent chance that he's gonna wrestle at WrestleMania. I don't think it's a ten percent chance. I think it's a hundred percent chance that he will fight Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania thirty two. You know what's weird? At, what's they have to they have to sell that event for a hundred and ten thousand people. You know what's weird about it? you're right, that's a great point. But is um do, I like we thought maybe Stone Cold CM Punk was gonna happen. But yeah, Stone that's Cold Lesnar is uh is interesting, a, which is a better match by the well, maybe not better match, but it's a better story. What's, what's I think? The, I think it would be crazy. What's the story gonna be? You were the ref in my match that time, and you stunned me. Because, well, well, think about it. Why did Stone Cold fucking take his ball and go home in the first place? The Brock Lesnar situation. Okay, because he was pissed off over the fact that Brock Lesnar they he wanted to build the match more, and they were like, "No, you need to go drop to him right now on Raw." And he's like, "Fuck that! I'm taking my ball and going home." Yeah. Well, goddamn son. You know, Brock Lesnar is the reason why the Stone Cold left that time. So, I mean, they can go into that. There's all kinds of stuff with that. But it's it's not – with them, it's not about the past like it would be with Stone Cold and CM Punk. It would just be about now. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Well, Stone Cold also might feel like he owes Lesnar almost. Yeah. Because, yeah. well, I mean, not that – I don't know if that's, that's a weird thing to say, but know that he like, you know, I should have just put you over back then and, and been Maybe. done with it. Maybe. But the, now the question does become, does Stone Cold lose to Brock Lesnar in Texas at WrestleMania 32? <laughs> That's like another yeah. question. Now, granted, Stone Cold's 50 years old, but he's also in amazing shape, and he's not wrestling anybody. He's going to punch and kick fucking Brock Lesnar, and they're going to brawl all over the fucking arena. Yeah. It's not going to be a wrestling match. Yeah. Uh, That's going to be awesome. Well, it's very interesting because, yeah, at the, towards the end of Stone Cold's last few times, he didn't look very good. And, uh, and here we are, like, fucking 10 years later or something best shape he's been in in years it, he and looked good remember i remember you know what the evidence of that by the way and the first thing i said was he's going to be in a match right now the way he's moving was yeah. was during tough enough when he was taking bumps with with uh luke that's he took, right he took bumps to luke and he looked great yeah and all the all this time off i mean yeah he's gotta he should be able to kick it into gear but it is it, still hard for me to believe that, it oh is. my God, Stone it's Cold! It's been so long. Fifty-year-old Stone Cold, yeah. it, who had knee braces years ago, who could, was having trouble, He's and then, and the whole neck good. thing is going to be able to have a match, and not a well, Bret Hart match. I don't think I don't think Brock Lesnar is going to be throwing him all over the ring either. Like I said, I think it's going to be a brawl, punch and kick type of match. Uh, it'll be it's going to be a fight, and it, you know what? It, that's even more evidenced by the fact that what match did he say needed to? Ha- he would only wrestle one match with Brock Lesnar. Yeah. A Texas death match. He even said it. Yeah. He even said it. He yeah. told us. He said, he goes, I got three yeah. words for you, Paul. The only match that I'd wrestle with Brock Lesnar's ass is a Texas death match. But now what I wonder about that Texas death match is, is WWE has a problem now with death, death. and death. kill. So I wonder if, if this does happen, if on Monday night, like when it does get announced, if they call it like in a Texas 
you know, like <laughs> a non-living match. No, it will be like they'll come up with some dumb name a Texas for Texas Tickle Fight. No, you're right. It will be something else. It won't be Texas Death Match. It won't no. be Kill Steen Kill. Yeah. It will. It will be Fight Owens Fight. It, did it, you hear? Did you hear that story? By the way, by Kevin Owens. No. He said that was not a WWE call. He said that was his call. It was his call. He, he said it was his call. He stopped doing it because of the kids and, and his kid. Because yeah. He said it was it, that was not a WWE thing. He said he wanted to stop with the kill Owens kill thing, kill Steen kill. Well, you know I got and I'll tell you something. There there's some things that are stupid. So like the fu for John Cena, I didn't, I, I, I didn't mind that. I don't yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think they need to change it to the AA. AA is stupid. Um, STFU. The STFU is cool. was awesome. <laughs> That's a great. Those were great names, and now that now it's stupid. But kill. Yeah, Kill Owens Kill makes no sense. On the indie scene, it makes sense because on the indie scene, it's like a visceral type of thing. And, but I mean, people still chant like, you know, Joe is going to kill you and Steen's going to kill you. Yeah. So it's, 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 it, here's the thing. Bailey's going to hug you. Yeah, it, it's accepted differently. It, it's like, kill you. Every, all the guys know what, what he, what they mean. It, yeah. They know he doesn't mean we're going to kill somebody. We know it means he's going to beat you. He's going to hurt you in the match. That's what kill means on the indies. That's what it means in NXT. But when you use, he's going to kill you. In the, the WWE Texas death match. Yeah, in the main roster, kids are thinking he's gonna kill somebody. Kill yeah, him. so they. You know what though? You know what though? Fucking how long ago was it? It wasn't even that long ago. Seth Rollins threatened to kill. He said, "I'm oh, gonna yeah. kill him anyway." Oh yeah, he, I'm gonna said it, he said it about Edge. <laughs> I'm gonna kill him anyway. Oh, I'm gonna so kill me. him anyway. You're right. <laughs> when we said that night, we said that's fucking crazy, it was right? Crazy. Like, I'll break his neck, John. You yeah. know what, John? You should know me better. I'm gonna kill him anyway. I'm gonna kill him anyway. <laughs> oh my God! You're, yeah, I mean, he must have. That must have slipped wrong. Maybe. maybe. Like that must have. Like I would. Oh God! Th this is why I need to get the wrestlers on here. Because yeah, I would. They, the they, they gotta sell out that fucking arena, dude. They gotta go. They gotta do 110,000 people. And what's gonna do that? Yeah. Is a headline match, a Texas death match between Stone Cold Steve Austin and Brock Lesnar. Take my money now. I'll bring 110,000 people. You're right. That's a great you know? point. It's got to be. And you know what? You, if you get The Rock versus Triple H. Oh, my God. You get The Undertaker versus Sting. Brock oh Lesnar versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. What the fuck are the real? What are the current roster going to do? You but know? The cool thing about those three matches is there's not a belt in those three matches. Yeah. There's there's not a belt there. But th but there's going to be people like, oh, the old guys take – you know what? I have no problem with the old guys doing it as long as they can do it because we're not going to have this forever. Yeah. We're running out of time. It's very finite. Uh, uh, and they can still have those matches and then still have fucking the shield uh, in a triple threat for the fucking I'd like title. To see, I'd like to see Bray Wyatt versus fucking Kevin Owens. Oh, my God. I was about to say the same thing. Bray so Wyatt and Kevin Owens for the fucking World Heavyweight title. And then you get – and then the shield – well, I, I wasn't gonna say for the world heavyweight title. That's oh, that'd be kind of cool, though. Oh God, I don't think they would do that. I don't think that. I'm thinking there's that, not enough time. Not this. I still think the Shield could be in that triple threat match for the Very title. Possible. Very because possible. Because then you get all three members of the Shield all, all all showcasing and for the WWE Championship, and then that gets all three of them in a match, and that takes up that spot because there won't be a lot of spots available with these three other matches with people who aren't main roster people really. That's true. And then so then you got Bray Wyatt, then you get Kevin Owens. Uh, and then you get then you get to get John Cena involved with somebody, and the IC belt hopefully defended. You know what? John Cena could still have the fucking United States Heavyweight Title at the oh I just yeah. called it the old school version the United States Heavyweight Title. Ric Flair used to call it that. Uh, the U.S. belt. Mm -hmm. uh, he could still have that at WrestleMania. That's a very good possibility. John Cena is starting to become like a Undertaker situation. Like yeah. he loses that to somebody. Whoever loses to him, that's putting them over. It's almost like they don't know yet really who's going to do it. But when we get to WrestleMania or when we get to SummerSlam or when we get to whatever pay-per-view he's going to lose it or where it's going to happen, wherever we get there, the person that he loses to is going to be put over huge. Yep. But also along the way, he's had all these little putovers too, even and, beating and, people. And the questions become like, what are you going to do with guys like Joe too? You know, yeah. Joe's got to be, Joe's going to be I'm not there. worried what about, you, do? you know, honestly me, this year, I'm not worried about Joe yet. I think he's next year. Next uh, probably, but Joe, Joe's going to be on the roster by then. You'd have to think, right? He's going to be on the main roster by midsummer. Um, I mean, I'm he's so he sure. can't do that long down in NXT. They've already filmed the match between him and fucking Owens. Yeah, 
You know, I mean, you can't assume he's going to be down there that long. That's why they signed him to the fucking main contract. Well, the reason why they signed him was because of the Destination America thing, but uh, because of Ring of Honor. Uh, but you can't figure he's going to be down in NXT very long. I guess you're right. I mean, I don't, I don't know if he'll still be able to make the WrestleMania card with what's going on. Yeah, because it's so jammed. But I mean, we're we're fucking talking about WrestleMania. We're fucking crazy, by the way. We are we that. are completely fucking insane. We haven't even hit SummerSlam yet. July, <laughs> August, September. I mean, can you believe that it's almost SummerSlam? I can't believe that this is going to be my third SummerSlam broadcasting on YouTube, and that last year's SummerSlam was the one where I put the condoms on my head. I just can't believe that it's. I gonna made be my three. debut on the after show, the simulcast with Tommy C. That's where I made my debut here. That's right. That's crazy. Isn't that nuts? That's craziness, and uh, but yeah, we got a uh, shit. July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, five, six, seven. Eight. We need nine months to go. We're talking about WrestleMania. <laughs> Fuck is wrong with us? Because that's what we're always going to. I mean, that's where it's always building, and maybe that's part of the problem too. Because we're not just worried about how are they going to book Raw. No, we're trying to figure out how this is all going to work into the context of WrestleMania nine, ten months from now. Yeah. Ah, uh, I should have put. Well, anyway. I, I think we should wrap. I gotta wrap it up. Um, I think we yeah. we fucking killed it here. Um, this might be our best fucking state of ever. We talked about Johnny fucking five. Yeah, we talked about Johnny five. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a plug real quick here. So, um, guys, right now on it's it's vimeo.com slash uh, Joe Cronin show. You want to go over there to watch my one hour pay per view event. Also, we're gonna have some bonus shows on there as well. Uh, between me and Dave and some other people as well and their their pay-per-view events. Uh, if you'd like to check them out, their bonus events, I'm going to have them over there as well. Uh, it's called Right now it's called Utter Chaos. Watch it. Um, it's up now on vimeo.com slash Joe Cronin Show Chaos. or you can go to joecroninshow.com and click on it and watch it. Uh, you can rent it or buy it. It's one hour. It's a pay-per-view of 2K15 and me calling it took me forever to do it enjoy it it's utter chaos it's the first one have a lot of fun also um <laughs> there's so so many funny little glitches in it by the way that like it's just <laughs> i'm like calling the action like it's real and then like a ladder explodes through a guy's head and flips out into the crowd how, how can you call it real by having to say but fuck dumb but I, and so I, I throw a lot of bfd out there BFD, too yeah, there you go. like oh bfd has set up rvd um, <laughs> anyway, so go there and check it out. My name's Joe Cronin, uh, and I'm the one doing the commentary. Um, subscribe if you've never subscribed to my channel, Joe Cronin Show, right here. Subscribe, click the like button, comment down below. Let us know what you think about the WrestleMania build, about Stone Cold, about everything we talked about. I want to hear it in the comments below. Or even better yet, if you want me to really read something, tweet my Twitter, at Joe Cronin Show. And, of course, if you do uh, purchase the pay-per-view on Vimeo.com slash Joe Cronin Show, then uh, there's a special code word message in it. A bunch of times I bring it up. You just got to email me that, and uh, you'll be entered to win. I'm giving away the stuff from the Wrestle Crate. Uh, it'll be Monday night after Monday night Raw, I believe. Maybe only four of you will buy it, and then four people will just win anyway. So uh, go over there, rent it, buy it, whatever. You, either way, renting it or buying it, you'll be able to do it. Uh, also, co-host right here, if you like Dave, The Dead on Dave on YouTube. The Dead on Dave, go over to his YouTube channel and subscribe to him. He's over there. Look at him in that beautiful shirt, button up, looking all nice. Yes, three subs away from 700. You can get me there. Get him there. Get him off. And I think uh, I'm approaching 14,000, so bam. Oh, wow. Do it. Get, let's get me to 14,000. I feel so paltry. <laughs> well, my first my first year with this channel, I hit uh, my first year. I think I was at where well, you were at. I think I was at 700 or 800. I'll have a year on Dead on Dave in September. September 21st is when I created the channel. Yeah, my so. first year was 500 to 800 subs. I'm hoping to hit 1,000 by September. I think it's a possibility. It's an outside chance, but I think it can happen. Yeah, I think you will. 1K. 115,000 views, you but bitches. The good news is a lot of your people watching are all engaged, uh, or at least most of them. It always happens that like 20% are really there, and then the rest yeah. disappear. Um, but I mean, look at me, like I have 14,000, my average views for a video is like 700. So, well, yeah, well, think about it. Monetize this drew 1400 uh, views already. So 10% of your, uh, fucking subs. Yeah. So like, that's what happens. It's like, it's weird. Yeah. Boogie fucking two nine, 2.3 million subs makes a video. Every video tops out at 60,000 views. 
Yeah. So where the fuck are the million and a half other people? <laughs> right. So it's just what happens on YouTube. But so always stay engaged. Um, State of the WWE episode number 39. What a great time, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being here. If you uh, want some more, go back and listen to the previous 38 episodes of State of the WWE. Also enjoy our previous monetized This Is. Um, uh, three different channels have hosted monetized This because of things that happened. So just type in the number and you'll be able to find the old ones uh, once you find out what number we're up to. Uh, if yeah. you're interested in that. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, have fun with that. Uh, <laughs> JoeCronenShow.com. And of course... Vimeo.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Go subscribe or follow me on Vimeo. Uh, Better HD, more stuff, more videos, stuff that other people can't see, you can get from me on Vimeo. So uh, enjoy that. And uh, thanks, The Dead on Dave. Thanks, me, Joe Cronin. And, um, yes, thank you. We'll see you live after Monday Night Raw this Monday. And uh, kiss my ass. <laughs>